So today we're going to be working on testing out this Strathmore Field Watercolor Set, or Field Watercolor Book, sorry. It is 400 series paper and I've already got an illustration on it. If you guys would like to work along at home with me, you can find this over on my Gumroad by clicking the annotation right here. You can find this exact image. Uh, and working from my, purchasing my images to paint from is a big help to me. Uh, so I would really appreciate it if you just headed over there and at least took a look. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to apply a nice blue, a warmish blue um, wash to the sky or the sky area. So I've got some Soho Urban Artist Manganese Blue Hue. And these are not particularly high quality watercolors. They are very much student grade and maybe fugitive. So if you are use, trying to use exactly the same colors as I use, uh, that's at your own risk. So the first thing I wanna do is take a wide flat brush. And this is just an inexpensive synthetic. Actually, it's a very, very inexpensive synthetic. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a wash of this blue. And you, those of you who watch my videos will notice that I have not done anything to secure the paper down to the surface. What I do want to do is I want to hurry up and blot out her face since I am moving pretty slow. It's an expensive brush. I mean, you really get what you pay for with this one. Because it has no load capacity at all. And since we're testing this paper, I wanted to shoot. Wanted to see how prone to buckling it will be and it looks like it's already moving some already curling up so that would be a problem if you were out in the field especially consider look at this that's ridiculous get a picture of that and we're going to go ahead now and use a clip to prevent it from curling up like this. See, this is why I do these reviews. So if a product has issues like this, you'll see that early on. Go ahead and dab that up. And soak up those little puddles over there. And after this dries, I will sort of restretch it. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, that first wash is dry. And I went ahead and I cleaned out my brush since uh, it had a lot of something in it, some unexpected goodie. And I'm noticing that this manganese blue hue from uh, Soho just doesn't really have much oomph to it. Not much color. something I did off camera is I lifted a lot of the blue out of the Black Eyed Susans and I will continue to do that. It's just easier to um, do what I'm going to do, paint what I'm going to paint, and then go back over and lift out any of the blue that might have gotten in where I didn't want it. And you can do that really easily with a paper towel. If you added paper towels for whatever reason, you can use toilet paper. And having to clamp my paper down, while not unexpected, I figured that was going to happen. Um, that happens with most watercolor papers that are below 300 uh, pounds. It is sort of frustrating. It would be nice if this field watercolor book came with um, an elastic band. 
can sense this is sort of desaturated. I'll just try to work with it maybe a little more directly. See, that's the color I was hoping to get. And this is a good example of why you shouldn't use cheap brushes. This one's kind of fighting with me and it has no water carrying capacity. This paper really wants the buckle too. So what I would recommend, especially if you're like outside doing some plein air sketching, is that you go ahead and you clip it down before you even start sketching and you work around the clip. And I know that's kind of disappointing for some of us. Some of us would rather not have that little metal rectangle show up in our paintings, but work around the clip if you can because it's easier than planning for a full page illustration and losing some space because you have to clip your paper down. You could also use a rubber band, um, but I find that gets in the way. So really it just comes down to, you know, work with what you're comfortable with. If you're okay with the paper buckling all over the place while you're painting and you know it'll flatten out later on, you know, go with that. I'm personally finding the clip rocking along with me trying to dab up paint to be make it really hard to work with. All right guys, so this hasn't actually fully dried, but I'm dissatisfied with how it's looking right now all that back and forth with um, a paper towel just really didn't do it any favors. So I'm going to go ahead and selectively darken certain areas with a smaller brush. That was what I got for thinking that all flats are pretty much the same. They're not all pretty much the same. Um, and that was just from like some generic brush kit that I had from years ago that I got tired of having it sit around so I decided to try to use it. Yeah, did not work very well. Now you guys can maybe see that this paper is trying to curl up and that does make applying paint kind of difficult. So it seems like another issue with this watercolor paper is that you're going to need to wait until your heavy applications dry out fully before you can add additional layers because the paper may become unmanageable. Now, Strathmore does make some other watercolor papers, Gemini and Aquarius, uh, I, or two that I can think of off the top of my head, in addition to their ready cut hot press watercolor paper, which I have, but I haven't actually um, reviewed yet. And part of that is because I'm not really a fan of hot press paper. I, I prefer the texture of cold press, so I know that whatever I say might be kind of biased, just based on my own preferences. So I've sort of held off doing a review of that because I figured, I didn't really have anything to say that would be helpful to other artists. And I have Gemini and Aquarius. I just need to get around again to testing them too. And those are cold press. It might actually be Gemini too. I believe the first Gemini had fiberglass in it. So it had this gorgeous luminosity for color, but it would tear up your hands if you rested your hands on the paper the way I'm doing right here. I might be remembering that wrong though. And of course, knowing artists and being an artist myself, uh, we often do ridiculously dangerous things for our art, so wouldn't really surprise me. The gentleman who told me that story was a Strathmore rep, and he said that artists loved it so much anyway, despite that little uh, issue. 
that they were happy, they would have been happy to continue using it. And like I said, knowing artists, it's like, yup, I can see that. In fact, I would love to get a hold of some of that older paper and just wear cotton gloves or, you know, attempt to wear gloves while I paint. Though I hate, I wore gloves when I was printmaking and I hated that. I mean, I did it, but I hated doing it. <laughs> so I don't know how long the, gla the gloves would last on me. Anyway, this is their 400 series watercolor paper. And 400, I believe, denotes better. So not quite the highest quality paper they have, but um, some of their nicer paper. I don't know that I've ever seen in the wild um, 500 series Strathmore watercolor paper other than the hot press ready cut. So that would be another thing that would be novel to see. Now we get to paint around the clip. And the color is actually much more vivid in real life than it is on camera. And I have had other artists point out to me that Soho colors are not archival. And I am aware of that. I enjoy them, A, because they're affordable. They're not the majority of paints that I use. The majority of paints I use are Daniel Smith and Windsor Newton, which are archival. And I'm aware of which ones in my pan set over here are and are not. Um, but I enjoy using them anyway, because most of my work is intended to be scanned and then printed or viewed on a video like you guys are doing here, or consumed as a sticker or as a print. Basically, for the most part, the originals are not intended to, to last forever. All right, there. Got a slightly darker layer of that manganese blue hue on there. That looks a little bit better. And it's gonna dry a little lighter. You guys see a blue-green, and I see a blue that has, that is more um, cold influence than warm. So it's not quite capturing the color as nicely as it could. But we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna get back to it in a, a while. I think it's gonna take a while if I'm being honest with myself. I wanna go ahead and add some of this lighter blue. Same color, manganese blue, um, just more watered down. Um, to her dress as sort of like a base shadow color. Doing stuff like this definitely helps marry the foreground with the background. All right, I think that skin tone is probably going to dry lighter than I'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix the skin a little bit darker. I'm using scarlet and yellow ochre. That might actually be a little too pink. And mix up a color for the blush. I dare say I can also start painting in my dandelions, or I'm sorry, my Lazy Susans. And I'm using Core Permanent Gamboge. And if I can't get that golden enough, I will use Soho Indian Yellow as well. And it doesn't really, really matter too much about the colors I'm using. It's not really what's important. I just mention them because sometimes people like to know if they're trying to paint along and it gives a good idea of approximates. For those of you though who haven't tried out Core Watercolors, I highly recommend you do so. They have some really nice vibrant colors. 
I'm using the one that、uh, came in my art snacks for July, I believe. Oh, shoot. That had not died. So I'll go ahead and clean that up and get back to it in a little while after I finish painting in all the lazy、uh, black eyed Susans. Paper curling up like that at the top is a bit of a problem. So I need to use another clip. We'll see how many clips I end up having to use by the end of this review. And really, what that tells me is whether or not this is a good watercolor paper. This is a paper that does need to be stretched. So, in the field sketch format, if you're adding a lot of water, if you're going to be doing washes, if you're going to be doing glazes, this paper just does not have the interior strength to handle all that. And I don't really know how a paper manufacturer could make a watercolor paper that is both thin enough and inexpensive enough. For field sketch use, and yet、uh, sturdy enough to take a lot of water. Maybe it has something to do with the amount of sizing used or、um, the fibers that are used in the paper production. And Strathmore 400 series is one of those sort of gray zone papers. It,、uh, for the price and the way it Feels, I would assume it is a cellulose base, so a wood pulp base,、um, but it is 400 series, which is supposed to be better. So, wouldn't you think they would want to either go cotton rag or a mix of cotton rag and cellulose? And of course, painting around an increasing number of clips just increases the difficulty of painting for me. Even with the clips, the paper gets wavy and buckly, which can make it kind of difficult to paint something consistently. And I found in my work, at least, that、um, when I'm fighting the paper like this, things tend to get really muddy because I make decisions I wouldn't otherwise make. Um, I try to rush through things because I find that the paper surface becomes unpleasant to work with.、Um, it just tends to be a really bad painting situation for me when I'm dealing with paper that's prone to buckling. Because my first instinct is to just hurry up and get things done. So, the paper has time to dry out and straighten out. Oh, that's too pink. That's still gonna be too pink. So, that's one of the problems with、uh, mixing a color too dark or too intense,、um, or adding too much of your darker color. Is that you? It takes a lot more of that lighter color to sort of bring it back than it did to,、um, well, it takes a lot more of the lighter color than it does of the darker color to blend something. Darker colors tend to go further, especially in watercolor. So it's going to take a lot of yellow ochre to get this sort of overly pink skin tone. Light enough, but it'll dry and it'll dry lighter. We'll see what we have then. All right, guys, so I want to go ahead and start filling in some of the bottom with green, at least a hint of it, and we'll see how that goes.、Uh, given the pa oh, shoot, that's not dark enough. So, something else I'm noticing is with the Soho Manganese Blue Hue, it,
um, it tends to lift up if you're applying a lighter color on top of it. On top of it. So uh, again, those of you following along at home, that is definitely something worth knowing. And it's definitely something that might be a little frustrating. If you are, if you enjoy doing glazes with your watercolors, most of my watercolor illustration involves glazes. So that makes manganese blue hue kind of um, not useful for me, I guess. Because this is the sort of color that I would put down early and then put other layers on top of. But we're not here to do a review of that. We're here to review this Strathmore Field watercolor book. And uh, to be fair, in the in the towards full disclosure, I have painted on their paper before, and I didn't like it then. I was kind of hoping a new format would change my mind. I don't think it has. And this was not a sponsored review. This is not a paid for review. I, I purchased the product and thought you guys might be interested in hearing my thoughts and experiences with it, especially those of you who are reading my watercolor basic series. One of the best ways to find out if a paper is right for you is to go ahead and try it. But you can also sort of skip the trial and error to an extent by seeing what artists you like or artists whose work is similar to you, what how they, if they use what papers they use, what they prefer, and uh, starting with those papers and seeing if those work for you. And um, if you are painting along at home, you might be wondering what I am using. I am using a Creative Mark Rhapsody brush in a four. And uh, yes, I did uh, break my own rules the other day and I used it for an inking demonstration. Usually um, it is a one way street. If something was purchased for watercolor, it stays watercolor. If something is purchased for inking, it stays inking until it's so wrecked that I uh, throw it in with my watercolor brushes as sort of a fill brush. This four is relatively new and has a pretty good point on it, so I thought it would be good for that inking demonstration. As you can see, the water does pool in certain areas and it doesn't dry quite evenly on this paper, which makes it a bit problematic as I want to go in with some darker green, more saturated green, and just sort of fill some areas in and then have it sort of diffuse out so I can get a more believable variegated effect. Now on good watercolor papers, this is not a problem. I can do this effect on Windsor Newton watercolor paper. Yeah, it dries so fast in some areas that I just can't, I can't get in there with that technique. And that tells me this has probably got a high wood pulp content because cotton rag is a lot better at holding water than wood pulp is. Which shouldn't be surprising. I am pretty sure this is the same paper that's used in the Strathmore Visual Journal. It handles a lot like it, unfortunately. And that sort of required me to learn how to use the handle of the paper in a different way because I was making a lot of accommodations for cheap paper. All right, let's soak up. Oh no, let's not soak up. So I find the paint a little hard to control on this paper. All right, 
this looks like it'll look nice after it dries um, but it's going to end up a lot more desaturated inexpensive watercolor papers like this very quickly kill the vibrancy in the paints so um, if you want to build up vibrant colors you have to add many many layers and sometimes these sort of papers can't take that so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll see what we're dealing with after it's dry all right guys so most of that has dried and you can see we've lost a lot of the vibrancy so I'm gonna go back in and just in certain areas I'm gonna add more color and it's kind of unfortunate but with less expensive papers like this or papers that are produced more cheaply I could say um, you just you're not going to keep that color vibrancy and you're also going to have problems with glazing because layered color will pick up previous layers and I think it's pretty dang important to know that see how maybe not might be no it's on screen okay you see how I have to hold down the paper with my finger it's because the paper is very prone to buckling up and I want to do as even an application as I can of course unfortunately these colors aren't gonna dry very vibrant either and you may just reach a point with these inexpensive papers where you decide it's just not really worth your time to fight with it which is why I get kind of frustrated when people say uh, you know cheaper the better for students because it, it just never performs the same way as nicer papers do um, Honestly, cheaper might be better for people who are familiar with the product because they will know uh, how to best accommodate for it. Whereas somebody who's just starting out will get really disappointed and discouraged with poor performance and they'll blame themselves. And I mean, of course, some of that is, you know, a lack of experience, but you know, a lot of it is also struggling against poor materials. I'm also getting a weird resist around some of the flower petals. All right. And I'm going to grab, you guessed it, another clip. And I'm going to put it down here. Actually, I may have to go with a big clip to help hold that tight. I think you guys are starting to get an idea for how I figure out where I want to place clips and other forms of support. And considering how murky green my watercolor water has gotten, if you're working with just one cup, now would be a really excellent time to go ahead and switch your water out. Glazing the stems with Windsor Newton Green Gold. I'm gonna have a lot of cleanup work to do with this all right so now we can start filling in the hair and the eyes and i'm at that portion of the painting where i'm kind of worried that i'm going to be disappointed with the end result but we'll see 
mostly say that because I'm really not pleased with the transition between the sky and the grass. And part of that is how the paper handled the pigment. But I've gotten pretty good at salvaging something, so this might be one of those things I can salvage. We'll find out. So we just knocked in the hair. And when that dries, we can go back to working on the dandelions. But in the meantime, we can actually, not, not, I keep calling them dandelions, they're lazy seasons. We can go in and zoom out and knock in those centers. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in time lapse because this is pretty straightforward and it doesn't really require any explanation at this point. So I will check back in in a few minutes. Alright guys, so the next oh next up we're going to add maybe the first layer of freckles depending on how they go. And we'll go ahead and tighten up the hair a bit. And let that dry as well. Alright guys, so I let this dry overnight, um, partially to give myself some fresh perspective. It's always nice to wake up with a fresh set of eyes, ready to tackle the challenges of the day. And we're going to try to build up some color and dissipate some of the muddiness on these black eyed Susans. And that might be quite a challenge. because they're already pretty muddy, unfortunately. And I am mixing a 
more orangish yellow ochre. So it's got some gold tones in it. In with that permanent gamboge to try and bring a little more life and warmth to these petals. And muddiness can happen a few ways. Uh, the most probable with this is we're just not getting enough uh, enough pop in the colors used. There's just not enough contrast on these flowers. And I do plan on going back in and adding some white highlights. So that'll add some of that contrast back. But we're also just not really able to build up as much tone using the yellow gamboge, or I'm sorry, permanent gamboge on its own. Another way is when your glazes lift up when you add new layers, which is definitely a problem on the Strathmore paper. And also, when you try to mix colors that are just too dissimilar, they can get kind of muddy, which also seems to have happened here. So we have a three-way problem caused by a color that is prone to reactivating the manganese blue hue. Um, paper that doesn't really take glazing very well. And just my own um, lack of familiar familiarity with a particular color. So we're going to let that dry and then check back in. All right, so I am glad I already went ahead and added one layer of tone to the dress. I think I'm going to keep the base of it white and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a darker blue blue green shadow and try to blend that out afterwards and I'm going with this color because it reflects the sort of green botanicals that are around I'm gonna go ahead and go change out my water uh, so I can start doing the skin shading and that sort of stuff because my water is looking pretty gross so um, and I'll also let this layer that I just applied dry so I will be back soon with that all right guys I'm gonna pull way out because I know some of you are interested in how I mix shading for skin tones. And I like to start with a palette of, or a well of clean water. And I'm going to go ahead and activate Naphthol Red Permanent Mauve or Mauve 
and um, some violet, I'm sorry, I don't have an exact name for it. Um, and give them a few moments to absorb that water, start releasing their pigments before I start mixing them into the well there. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that naphthol red because it's pretty fast to activate. And go ahead and darken in her mouth. And we're gonna add teeth in a little while. And go over and use some cherry red mixed with the naphthol red to start shading those little red stripes and those were painted in with a scarlet I believe I believe it was a, um, a da Vinci maybe not um starts with a D gosh Van Gogh there we go I don't know why I thought of it as starts with a D my brain always misclassifies Van Gogh that way too those paints or maybe it's Lucas, it might be Lucas. And we're gonna go back in with the Windsor Newton Indigo. And add a little bit of shading to the blue stripes. No, I was off camera right there for you guys inside. And we're also gonna go in no, wait, I wanna wait on that one. So I'll let those dry. And while we do that, let's go ahead and mix up that skin shade color. So the naphthol red. And like I said, we'll let that dry. All right, so when applying shadow to the skin, on most papers, you're not going to get pickup. Uh, I am afraid of getting some lifting here on the Strathmore paper. Uh, it's been a problem the entire time I've been painting on it, so it is definitely something to be wary of. So I'm going to keep my shadows very light, try to keep it to just one layer, try to get it right on the first go round. Uh, usually I'll build up shadows, but I'm just gonna try to knock it right out for the first time. And the reason for that is the less I mess with it, the less I blend it, the um, less likely it is to lift and get kind of screwy. So we're gonna hope for the good old one and done. All right, so that skin tone has dried and I think I'm going to just leave it as is. Like I said, I don't really wanna mess with it too much because it's gonna make it more likely to be muddy. I'm going to go ahead and apply or reapply some of the freckles. When doing freckles, I usually like to do a couple of layers. It just looks more realistic. And we're gonna go ahead and get into that hair. And I'm using Van Dyke Brown to get started. All right, and I think after that dries, our next step is the white wash. All right, guys, so I thought about it and I realized we could probably benefit from a little bit of brown uh, just to sort of um, add some depth to some of these flowers. Since I was telling you guys earlier, one of the problems I'm having with this piece is I feel like there just isn't enough contrast. And sometimes going much darker can help with that. Of course, not if you get your finger in it. And I do believe that brown is gonna help. All right. 
let that dry. All right, guys, let's get this finished up. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with white gouache, it is an opaque watercolor or water-based uh, paint medium. They do sell acrylic gouaches. I don't use them. Um, mostly because one of the things I like about gouache is that you can add water and you can um, achieve more subtle effects. So we want to go ahead and add some water to our gouache until it has a creamy consistency. And you don't really want to use your dirty uh, wash water, especially if you're working one cup. And I really recommend you work two, but I mean, you guys see my workspace. There's just no room for two. All right, so we've got our gouache. Now it's time to start adding those highlights. I should probably zoom in for you guys. So I was chatting about this paper late last night, like when I finally finished recording for the night last night, I was on Twitter tweeting about this paper and it seems to get two very strong responses. You have people who use literally nothing but Strathmore watercolor paper and you have people who really, really don't like it. And there isn't really a whole lot in between. I guess the most in between are the people who uh, haven't used it yet, <laughs> don't have an opinion. That's the most in between you're gonna get. Um, and, you know, I'm always interested in people who get a different result than me because there's often a new technique that I can learn uh, to better handle the materials I've already got. So I, I'm usually very open to hearing about that. So I was like, okay, well, how do you, how do you handle the paper? And I, I wonder if I came off as defensive. That wasn't my intention. My intention was like, okay, I, I'm having trouble with like a lot of water on the paper and color sloughing off. Maybe they're handling it differently. Maybe they're doing something I'm not doing. Um, now one of them, one of the people who commented lives in Australia. So they uh, have a different climate than I do here in Tennessee. And yesterday was pretty humid. It's actually much drier now, so I'm not having quite the sloughing problems I was having yesterday. So I think that's part of it. And um, color sloughing off your paper, that sort of issue, that's pretty common with inexpensive watercolor papers, regardless of the brand. So that's just, you know, a cellulose or wood pulp based paper issue. That's not um, something that is unique to Strathmore. It's not something that they re it's, is really their fault if that's what's going on. Um, I've also been using a lighter hand today and I'm not trying to apply washes. They did say they weren't getting the buckling though and that they use a lot of water. And, um, but they thought I was using a block and I'm not using a block. So I know if I re was using a block, um, the buckling wouldn't be an issue because a block is taped on at least two sides, usually four sides. Um, and is just, you know, held down more securely than this, which is held down on one side and not even because the spirals. Um, and then I have it clipped all around to add additional support. And I have used Strathmore's uh, watercolor blocks before. Again, I don't really care for them um, compared to, you know, comparable products. I mean, global papers, uh, fluid cellulose paper blocks, so just regular fluid, not fluid 100, those perform a lot better. Well, they, they peel up from the blocks when you get towards the end of a, of a block, so you do need to tape the edges. But in general, the paper itself performs a lot better, and I use that paper pretty regularly for con commissions. But me they're using more color pencil than I am I don't know they didn't disclose any of that 
So unfortunately, I can't share that information with you guys, but if you enjoy using this paper and you have tried other papers um, and you are using it in a different method or if I'm handling it somehow incorrectly, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment, let me know. When I do these reviews, I do them to help you guys. So, you know, if there's something I can learn that can be a benefit to you, then I'm very interested. I really want to remove these clips. But I am pretty sure even this minute amount of water in the gouache may cause buckling. And I don't feel like dealing with that. So I am using the gouache to sort of hide some of the mistakes I made where colors sort of bled into each other where I didn't want them to. I'm also using it to add white highlights, of course. It's always hard to work on spirals. And adding the white gouache is helping a bit with contrast, so that's good. Oh, I'm totally off screen for you guys. I apologize. All right. Um, and I think the last thing I want to do is I want to go in with a little bit of white color pencil. and add highlight on the stems. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove most of these clips because they are super in the way. And let's see if I can't restage my camera a little better. Again, still on the lookout for a better camera mount than what I'm using. So if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. I think we're going to call this finished. So you guys will notice over here there's that big blank area where the clip was. When I scan and digitize this I'm going to trim that off so I can actually use the image for things. Um, I did find this paper frustrating to paint on. Um, I found that it shifted a lot actually when it got wet and dried again and that's sad because I have another watercolor thing coming up on the same paper but it's going to use less water. I found that my colors lost vibrancy very quickly as they dried and even layering it lose you don't get to retain the jewel like colors. Um, I found it difficult to build up saturation um, and I found that colors lifted a lot when you would apply subsequent layers even if the paper seemed like it was fully dry. Um, do would I recommend the Strathmore 400 series field watercolor with cold pressed paper, 140 pound paper. Um, interlace with 60 pound sketch paper. It really depends on how you work. Like I said, there were people on Twitter last night who really enjoy this paper and then there are people on Twitter who have used this paper and really don't like it. And I'm talking about other illustrators, other comic artists, um, people who when they create art on watercolor paper they have specific needs that are specific to their style so what might work for me might be terrible for you and that's something to keep in mind with this paper do i think it is adequate as a field sketchbook i feel like it's a frustrating field sketchbook if you're going out in the field it does have these nice sturdy laminated chipboard covers um, but you're going to want to bring at least one clip and that's going to eat up some of your space and it will get in the way of your drawing. Um, I also personally don't care for the texture of this paper. This is a cellulose um, based paper so it is a wood pulp paper. It um, just doesn't take the paint as well as a cotton rag watercolor paper would. Um, so 
Oh, and one more thing before I sign off. This is the same paper as is in the Strathmore Visual Journal 400 series watercolor paper journal. Those are a little less expensive. So if you do want to try using this paper, I recommend you don't pay the extra money for the field watercolor book and you just go for, let me grab it. This is a Bristol vellum one, but it's the same format. Just go for the um, visual journal. It's got nice chipboard covers as well. And it's got the coated spirals. I mean, they're nice um, sketchbooks and they cost less. So that's my recommendation. I hope you guys found this review slash kind of tutorial helpful. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it inspiring. Um, I hope you learned something at least, even if you learned that this paper might not be the right one for you. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please take a moment to hit like. That helps me out a lot. That lets YouTube know that you enjoy this sort of content and that you want more of it. Um, and please take a moment to share this with your friends over on your favorite social media source um, by using the social network sharing buttons down below. It really means a lot to me and it helps me out a lot. You're doing me a big favor. It is a big thank you to me when you share this video to your social network and I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me that you are willing to do that. Um, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments below. I would love to see how you use Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper and do keep in mind that Strathmore is not a sponsor of this YouTube channel. I was not paid for this review and I purchased this product out of my own pocket. So for better or for worse, my opinions are my own. Um, this is part of my watercolor basic series over on my blog and that's natosoup.blogspot.com and I will be doing a few other watercolor paper out and out reviews but I have been painting for several years and I've tried several brands so I do have favorites. If you are interested in that, I do believe um, I have a few posts on selecting a watercolor paper for you where I give recommendations and I provide examples and I can link that right here. So um, yeah, if you want more watercolor goodness, go on and check out the blog. Uh, finally, if you enjoy content like this and you would like to help make content like this possible, uh, it would be a huge help if you head over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how to join the natosoup community. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It's always good to see you guys. I hope I see you guys again really soon. I'm Becca Hilburn with Natosoup Studio. Have a great day, guys. Bye.